Yo, what's going on? Going on, everybody. Welcome back to Comic Comic Books I C. Um, another day, another day, another storm in New York City, but uh, we we are here live to do the fourth episode in my Star Wars Mega Metal series. Um, I got a nice uh grouping of Star Wars related stuff. As you guys know, this is the show where where I. Set aside all my Star Wars related related collectibles, whether whether it be toys, figures, yeah. books, regular regular books, uh, clothes, video games, art, uh, comic comic art, anything Star Wars related, uh, um, we are, are we, we we get into into uh, on this hall. Oh, we got some weird feedback going on. That's that's no good. Um, let me see if I can fix fix it. How about is that all right? Let me know in the chat chat if they're right or or um, if it's uh, uh, annoying enough for me to redo this because <laughs> uh, I'm not quite sure. Um, but let me know in the in the chat. Uh, we got we got some folks in here. Uh, we got we got Masso. We go we got JP's Magic Collecting. Dun 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 dun. dun, dun. Exactly. Uh, we got Geeks and Drinks and Drinks. Uh, we got J Salsa Twenty Three. That knights of old what's up night knights uh still messed up okay okay what what, what exactly is messed up about it let me let me let me see if i can switch uh from the mic to the laptop top mic. maybe that'll help hold on doubling okay okay on why would be doubling i only got we got one mic source in in um About now, guys. Let me let me know in the chat. This is frust frustrating. Uh, <laughs> what about what about now? What about now? Nope. 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 Uh, let me see if I can mess with the set setting more. What about now. What's up, comics for Thomas? What about now, guys? Sounds like a remix. Um, well, I changed the mic uh, source to be completely different. So if it's good now, let me know. Um, if it's not, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start over. <laughs> um, OK, good now? Good now. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm gonna have to test out the whole setup then because I didn't change anything at all from the setup from the live stream last night. Uh, but uh, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm result, I'm, I'm uh, what's, it, what's it called? I'm uh, re uh, re revolving to the, uh, or resolving to the laptop microphone now, so. Hopefully it sounds good for you guys. What's up, Mr. Garrell? Uh, Cookie, just a little podcast. What's going on, guys? Uh, we're dealing some with some technical difficulties here up front, but uh, I think we've worked itself out. So once again, this is the Star Wars Mega Hall Show. We're going to get right into it uh, because of the, of the technical issues to start. So let's just get right into the hall here, guys. Thank you for hanging out. I uh, hope you guys enjoy what I have to share here today. Hit that thumbs up button. Uh, if you can, and if you're watching this on the rewind, sorry for the first four minutes, and please, I would appreciate it if you hit that thumbs up button. Thank you, guys. Um, yeah, resorting, that's the word, resorting to the laptop microphone now that I'm having technical issues, which I'll have to fix. But here we are. You guys know that I always start out these Star Wars mega halls by sharing some what I call swag, uh, which is kind of like a miscellaneous category for different kinds of knickknacks and just kind of random things. What's up, Sean Richards in the house? We got Bake the Snake in the house. What's going on, guys? Um, so we always start off with the swag. So I'm going to show you. Uh, I got this pretty cool Han, uh, Han Leia Luke sticker from the Resistance Broadcast podcast. They sent that to me. Really pretty, pretty cool sticker. Uh, I'll maybe put that on a short box or something. I'm not sure where I'm going to put that, but... Uh, 
pretty cool sticker. Uh, what's up, poor Mike in the house? Good to see you, brother. He just ha he just opened up a great AOK from Stone Cold that involved a, a, a really cool Boba Fett Star Wars comic. Go check that out. Uh, they also sent me this uh, this kind of like mini print. It's got their logo on the back, and then it's got this "Wherever I go, he goes." Uh, baby Yoda thing. So two pieces of swag there from the Resistance Broadcast podcast. Pretty cool there. Um, Daymares sent me an ALK recently uh, of these of this these Star Wars trading cards. I still have them sealed because I got no one to play with right now. Um, but I do plan on opening these and kind of digging into these. But really cool, like different colors. You know. Some represent the dark side, some represent the light side. But yeah, really, really cool uh, playing card set that Daymire's hooked me up with. I posted these to Instagram uh, as well, but awesome playing cards. Thank you, Daymire's, for that. Um, and then recently when I when I picked up, uh, it's, it's regular playing cards. It's not like a Sabak game or... Uh, or uh, any specific game or whatever. It's uh, it's just a great, yeah, it's just a great, like just another collector saying a great way to play cards. It's just uh, regular playing cards, but Star Wars branded and whatnot. Uh, speaking of cards though, which are, I guess, all their age now, uh, J Hood Creative hooked me up with these uh, Star Wars, what are they called? Tops Wide Vision cards. Uh, from like the special edition. I'll, I'll do my best to quickly go through these. We have a X-Wing, X-Wing Fighters card. The backs of these are pretty cool too. Uh, we got a TIE Fighter cockpit. Um, we got a Surface of the Death Star. Cool. Uh, we got uh, Space Around Death Star TIE Fighters. Okay. We have um, Exterior X-Wings uh, adjacent to the Death Star in space. I love that one. That one's really cool. Right. Check the backs of these. Yeah, I can't find cases um, to base point <laughs> for, for these size. I'll have to look into that. Um, I'm sure they exist. I haven't really looked that hard. Uh, we got the main hangar deck with uh, with uh, Luke and Han and Chewie and 3PO in the background. Right there. Uh, we got the Millennium Fal Falcon gun port with Luke. At the at the guns, really cool. We got Solo's gun port in the Falcon. That's a cool shot right there. Boom. We got the detention corridor with Leia and Han in the stormtrooper outfit and Chewie. Uh, we got the control room with Tarkin, Leia, and Vader. Don't get cocky, kid. Exactly, poor Mike. So we got the docking bay 94 spaceport with the Falcon and the gang right there. Mos Eisley, of course, Tatooine, which... They use an adjacent spaceport in the Mandalorian. Uh, we got most Isley Cantina. I mean, no one doesn't need to be reminded what scene this is. Um, love that. And all, all of these are pulling, I believe, from the special edition. Like, this is the special edition era Lucasfilm, I want to say. Yeah. Uh, we got uh, another most Isley Cantina. Uh, we got Vader in in the uh, conference room on the Death Star. Another classic right there. 
We got the uh, we got Luke's home on Tatooine and the twin sons setting the homestead of the Lars family. Oh, show the bag. We got the sand crawler. Yeah, these cards definitely have great stills from the movies right here. Uh, we got the blockade runner corridor scene with Vader. Uh, we got the sub hallway. This is faint. This is classic right here. Leia and R2. That shot. Love that shot. Uh, we got the Great Assembly Hall medal ceremony, of course. End of a New Hope. Uh, we got Luke in the X-Wing cockpit. That was amazing in Rogue One, poor Mike. How it led right into that scene. We got the Imperial Star Destroyer from space. And the last card is uh, a promotional card that says the Star Wars Trilogy Special Edition is coming in February. <laughs> so there you go, right there. So that was the card set uh, that was in that lot I picked up from J Hood uh, Creative. Uh, there's a couple more things from that lot uh, to come in this haul, but uh, that uh, that's all the cards for now, uh, or really for this haul anyway. Um, I do need to find like a better way to store this thing. Right now, it's just in this you know whatever Ziploc bag that that he sent them to me with, but. I'll, I'll figure out a better solution. Uh, and the last item here, I would say, is that's in the swag category is this hat, which, you know, some of you guys may have caught it uh, when I unboxed it uh, a few weeks ago. But it's one of those, it's a Droid Depot hat uh, with the cool, cool etching throughout and detail. Really, really dig it. Uh, and then, of course, the Droid right there. Uh, poor Mike, what year were those cards? I think they were 1994 or 95. Um, let's see. Uh, man, I need like a magnifying glass to read this thing. Uh, I think they were 94. But anyway, I can't read it. The text is so small uh, in the fine print at the bottom of those cards that uh, I can barely read it. Uh, even with my glasses on. But um, all right, so that's it for swag. Uh, pretty cool hat, uh, throwing that into that category. But uh, that's it on the swag front. Uh, next category for this episode is going to be magazines, which I don't really have a ton usually to talk about with this category, but I just so happened to this time. So I will share a couple magazine-related pickups. So this one... Uh, this one actually Jay Hood uh, threw into that lot that I was just talking about, and you're asked. And what, upon first view, you, you might ask yourself, "Well, what is this doing in a Star Wars hall? It's a Cinescape magazine with Jim Carrey's The Mask on it." But as you can see here up 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 top, where it says Star Wars Update, so this magazine came out in 1994, I believe. Uh, and they included, yeah, August 1994, and they included a article in here, right here, that says, Lucas drops Star Wars info, August 1994, remember, five years before the prequels came out, and right here, it's like, new details on the next trilogy of films and the relationship between Obi-Wan and Anakin Skywalker are revealed. So this is kind of like the you know around the time period where the the prequels uh, you know were first kind of I guess being green lit and the rumors about the special editions. See, so it says giving the first three a facelift. 
um, were starting to come out about Lucasfilm possibly re-releasing the original movies with quote unquote upgrades, <laughs> right? So, uh, so yeah, so this is a cool little early article of, um, of, you know, I guess new Star Wars information or whatever happening in the world. So uh, pretty cool of Jay Hood to throw that in there. I have no clue if it's any sort of appearance or can, you know, uh, true first or anything like that. Yeah, cameo of, of, of the prequels, who knows. What's up, Sam I am in the house, uh, Rag718 in the house, good to see you guys. Um, thanks for hopping in. But yeah, I just thought that was a pretty interesting tidbit. He also threw in uh, this issue of Star Wars Insider Magazine in the, into the lot, uh, which uh, this is Star Wars. Uh, if, you don't, if you're not familiar with Star Wars Insider, is the official, you know, pub, uh, magazine publication uh, for Star Wars uh, fans from from Lucasfilm Publishing. Uh, and this is issue number 160, which came out, uh, which came out in 2015 in the lead up to the Force Awakens. So I haven't really flip through this in great detail yet, but pretty cool to have uh, issue number 160 of Star Wars Insider uh, in the collection. So thank you for that as well, Jay Hood. Uh, and then speaking of Star Wars Insider, uh, the latest issue of Star Wars Insider is number 200. So it's a milestone or anniversary issue. And uh, I forget which retailer it was, may have been Frankie's, uh, did a exclusive variant for it uh, with Peach Momoko, uh, actually, with, uh, with um, uh, Din Djarin, Mandalorian, and Grogu, uh, Baby Yoda, the child, whatever you want to call it. So I picked up that set, uh, of course. So here is the, the one with the trade dress. Really, really cool. I, you know, I don't like every Peach Momoko cover that I see, but I really, really dig this one. Uh, of course, you got Mando. And Grogu here, Star Wars Insider, and it's like this gold, gold, a foil, silverish, goldish foil uh, on that trade dress right there, uh, which is pretty cool. I, I dig that. And uh, it came with a Virgin edition uh, or a Virgin variant of that. So it was a two, two book set with the trade dress version and the, uh, the Virgin variant version of it, of the Peach Momoko cover. So I had to grab that, picked up that lot. Um, so yeah, man, I dig that when I claim, right? Um, I dropped the starting line. Yeah, it is a nice cover. Um, Comics for Thomas, definitely I got my hands on that. Yeah, man, it is a nice cover, man. I like that gold trade trade dress myself. Uh, StreamYard's warning me about my connection again. I'm having so many technical issues, guys. I apologize. Uh, but uh, just now the collector saying that Star Wars Insider had some great articles on the cast members. Nice, very, very cool. Um, so yeah, that is the magazine section of the hall. Uh, nothing crazy, but I, I do dig those. Uh, but let's move on. Let's move on to the next category of this show. Next category is gonna be books, like just regular books that you have to read the words. Um, <laughs> get out there and brush that snow off everything. Dude, I've had weird power issues today. Like I'm not even gonna get into it. I don't even. I don't think it was related to the snow, but yeah, it is, it did snow again today, and it's probably. I think it's snowing again tomorrow, so can't wait. Uh, but we're gonna get into the books, i.e., the books that you have to read uh, to understand, which um, you know, uh, which you may or may not be into. But I'm into it uh, when it comes to the Star Wars. So I don't think I've I've shared uh, any of the High Republic book stuff on this hall show. Uh, yet, I, but you know, I've been picking all those books up and reading them. I'm not going to get into like my full reviews or anything like that on here, but I, I will say that I am enjoying that new era of storytelling quite a bit. So I'm a fan of it. Um, starting with Light of the Jedi by Charles Soule, which is sort of the main adult novel in the line. So if you only read one thing, this is probably the one thing that you should be reading. Uh, if you want to get into this new era, uh, but that's kind of like the primer that kind of sets up the whole universe, and then sort of every other story or book kind of is expanding from that. So, like, I would almost consider this to be like the High Republic core document or Bible or whatever you want to call it, and then everything else kind of stems from what this 
kind of starts or sets up, uh, which has been pretty cool. So one of the other books uh, in that sort of extension was uh, Test, A Test of Courage by Justina Ireland. So this is a smaller book. Uh, it's for middle grade readers. Uh, so, you know, I think, I think we're talking about like seventh, seventh graders, sixth graders, eighth graders, something like that. That's kind of the target audience for this. Um, I did enjoy it, uh, not nearly as much as I enjoyed Light of the Jedi. It's a much more isolated story, definitely for a younger audience compared to the adult novel. But still, I thought it was pretty solid and I did enjoy it. Um, but the third book to come out was this, Into the Dark by Claudia Gray, who I've talked about before uh, as being one of my favorite Star Wars authors, uh, if not my favorite Star Wars author, at least in the new canon stuff. So uh, I really, really enjoyed this. Already finished this one. Uh, Light of the Jedi, I've actually read twice already. I read the actual book and then I listened to the audio book. Uh, Test of Courage, I just read the book. I didn't do the audio book. Into the Dark, I just read the book so far. I haven't done the audio book yet, but I probably will do the audio book for this one because I liked it enough to also check out the audio book. So I would say that my, you know, my ranking would be one, two, three so far on these books, but they're also for three different audiences, okay? This is for adults. This is for YA or like, you know, teenagers to young adults. And then this is for um, sort of middle grade readers. So that's kind of the layout of the High Republic uh, books, hardcover books so far. Uh, I got the audio book on uh, Audible, RAG 718. Um, let's see. Uh, the, the only other High Republic book that is currently out is this. This is for like young children. It's called Star Wars, The High Republic, The Great Jedi Rescue. It's only like five or six bucks. Uh, here's the back cover. Uh, but it's what it really does is it, it kind of dumbs down the story from Light of the Jedi for young kids and summarizes it and then tells it, you know, tells it in a way that is appropriate for kids without all, you know, without the deaths and like any major violence and stuff like that. But it kind of just summarizes Light of the Jedi in a qu super quick flippable read for younger kids, uh, which is pretty cool. And then it also includes two sticker pack sets. So there's one sticker pack set and there's another sticker pack set. So I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, just a little bit of a supplemental thing. Uh, if you have young kids and they wanna know what happened in this book without reading this whole huge book, which is meant for adults, uh, then hook them up with this one because it pretty much outlines the story that happens in here. Not, not every single nitty gritty detail, but enough to the point where you can sort of understand the story without reading the full Light of the Jedi uh, novel for adults. Um, let me, uh, we had Rag718 had a question. So does High Republic connect with High Republic Adventures? Um, it's part of the same timeline. Like there are crossovers between the comics and what happens in these books. It's all part of the same era of Star Wars, which is 200 years before the Phantom Menace when, you know, essentially the world is at peace or not the world, the galaxy is at peace and the Jedi are sort of at the top of their game and, and, and stuff like that before you know, the dark side emerges, but there's other villains uh, to deal with. There's other threats to deal with in the universe. And uh, it's, it's, it's been an interesting, uh, interesting ride so far because I've read all of the stuff that has come out, comics and the books, and I'm quite enjoying it. So uh, I would personally recommend it, uh, but that's pretty much all I have to say about that. I uh, do have a couple more hardcover books to share uh, in this episode. Uh, I picked these these two up in that lot from Jay Hood. We got a first print, first edition of Timothy Zahn's Heir to the Empire. Then we have a first print, first edition of Timothy Zahn's Dark, Dark Force Rising. I still need a hardcover first print edition of the third uh, Timothy Zahn Thrawn novel in this trilogy, uh, which is now considered Legends, I guess. Uh, also got a second copy <laughs> first edition copy of Heir to the Empire, uh, which I don't know if I'll keep it or move it or whatever, but um, yeah, 
great book. Uh, I'm not going to spend a ton of time talking about it, uh, but those are three more books part of this uh, Star Wars Mega Hall episode. So there are the books. Um, and uh, <laughs> Mr. Carey, I don't know, man. You were you were MIA, dude. Um, it was on my own claim sale, too, uh, and nobody else claimed it, so I claimed it because uh, Jay Hood was a seller on that sale uh, that I hosted. So uh, that's it for the books, guys. Uh, we are going to next get into some video games. So um, not a ton on the video game front this time. I picked up a single lot of Star Wars video games uh, for the original Xbox. So the first Xbox console. Um, I picked this up from a seller in early December, early December, they mailed it right away and it got lost in the postal system so badly that it didn't arrive until about a week and a half ago. So mid February. So literally from early December to mid February. So like two, two and a half months it took uh, the postal system to get this video game lot to me. I thought it was going to be completely lost, honestly, but it, it finally did arrive. So there were five X, original Xbox games in this lot. I recently picked up a Xbox One, One S, I think, or Xbox. Yeah, I think it's an Xbox One S, which is not the current Xbox Series X or Series S. It's the, it's the, it's the console that came right before it. Um, but it's backwards compatible with you know, the Xbox One, of course, and the Xbox 360 and the original Xbox. So I can play my old Xbox 360 games and my original Xbox games on it, uh, which is cool. And I didn't have to pay the Xbox Series X or S, you know, prices, which is high demand right now. I always tend to wait on the newer consoles and I kind of take advantage of the prior generation consoles when the new ones are coming out because I can get them much cheaper and I can get the games much cheaper, et cetera. So that was my strategy there. But these are the games that showed up in this in this lot. Uh, we had a Star Wars Starfighter Special Edition for the original Xbox. These are all complete in-box games. So I will I'll show you guys. Manual, disc, box, Star Wars, Starfighter, Special Edition, that was the first game. Then we also had Star Wars Obi-Wan. These are all original Xbox games. And I'll open again, there we go. Boom. Obi-Wan, we got Star Wars The Clone Wars. All complete in box games, Clone Wars. We had Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith, original Xbox. All right, and we had finally in this lot Star Wars Republic Commando. So yeah, uh, nice uh, little five game original Xbox lot of Star Wars games right there for me to dive into on my relatively new Xbox One S that is backwards compatible. What's going on, Graphic Man in the house? Good to see you, man. Um, all right, so that's pretty much it for the video game segment of the haul. Uh, next up, we have uh, comics. So let's do the comics for this uh, episode uh, first, we, I'm gonna get into the moderns. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna blast through these uh, pretty quickly, pun intended. Um, I'm gonna blast through these uh, pretty quickly, so just bear with me. Uh, yeah, a lot more Star Wars games have been released <laughs> than I I realized as well. Uh, what's up, Jimmy the Geek aficionado is in the house. Good to see you, brother. So I'm gonna bear I'm gonna blast through these as quickly as I can. Uh, First up, we had Lando, Double or Nothing, number one. Uh, this will come up later once we get to the original art section, so I'm going to put it to the side. Uh, then we had Star Wars Age of Republic, Qui-Gon Jinn. 
Uh, this is the photo cover variant. Uh, I think it's a, I think it was an incentive variant. Uh, this also will come up when we get into the original art section. Picked up two copies of that. Uh, we had Star Wars number eight, the A cover, Carlo Fabulian. Love this cover. This will also come up in the original art section later, so I'll set that aside. Uh, picked up a second copy of that as well. Had to get two. Uh, picked up two copies of the this Dark Horse uh, uh, Phantom Menace issue for Qui Gon Jinn. So this was uh, this was from the Dark Horse. Uh, run Star Wars Episode One, Qui Gon Jinn Number One. Picked up two copies, so those are both from Phantom Menace. Uh, photo covers of Qui Gon, Liam Neeson, of course. Um, <laughs> sorry, Gerald, what's up? Uh, poor Mike in the house. Uh, I wish, dude. I I'm a little bummed my mic isn't working, and I had to like uh, resort, as Knight said, to my my worser mic, but. Um, Knights of Old, I already do collect vintage Star Wars toys. I have a couple, but I haven't gone like so crazy that I need to like complete the set or do anything like that. I'm not, I'm not like that obsessed with it, I guess. Um, all right, uh, just bear with me. I'm gonna get through these real quickly. Uh, uh, High Republic Comics. So this is the Phil Noto A cover for number one. Picked up uh, four copies of that, four copies of it. Uh, we got, this was the B, uh, no, this was the, I don't know, this was the C cover, I think, or maybe, no, this was the 1 in 10. This was the 1 in 10 incentive cover. This was the 1 in 25 cover. Uh, I do have the Stephanie Hans cover on the way, uh, which I snagged for like 20 bucks or something for Midtown somehow, which I feel like that's a good price for the Stephanie Hans one, but if you guys are aware of the pricing of that book, let me know. Um, and then uh, Rag mentioned it earlier in the chat, the High Republic Adventures, picked up two copies of the A cover. I read this uh, a couple couple days ago. This was the, the I guess, the latest thing that I've read, and uh, I enjoyed this. Um, I, I liked it a lot more than the normal IDW Star Wars comics because they, they tend to really be, you know, targeted towards kids. Uh, you know, the Star Wars Adventures line that IDW puts out, whereas the Marvel books tend to be more for, like, me, you know. Uh, but this actually felt a lot more adult than the normal, star, uh, you know, normal IDW Star Wars books did to me, and I enjoyed the new characters quite a bit that were that were introduced in this issue. So I'm actually, I actually have kind of high hopes for this um, Adventures line, at least as it relates to the High Republic with the IDW books. So that was the moderns, um, moderns for the Star Wars books in this haul. Uh, also did pick up uh, in the past several weeks or months or whatever, uh, you know, many of the original Marvel uh, run uh, back issues. Some of these are, some of these are run fillers for me. Some of these are like doubles or triples or whatever. But you know, when I can get a good price or or whatever, and I just kind of snag it. Um, so just you know, I'm just gonna bust through these super quickly. But we had issue number 41. So these are all from the original run, Marvel. This was issue number uh, 24. Issue number 23, number 22, number 20, nineteen. Uh, 18, yeah, the original run books are just always fun to collect, man. Love them. Uh, yes, and the Mylar, they, they definitely pop really nicely in Mar Mylar, especially any, especially a lot of them have black, significant amount of black in the cover because of the space, you know, it's Star Wars. Uh, but, uh, there's number 18, 15. Fourteen, uh, 
13. Twelve. Number eleven. A uh, question from poor Mike: Did they TPB the original? You mean trade paperback? Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure that there's a way. I'm sure that you can get it in 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 graphic novel form. I have the omnibus uh, for, for, I have the, I think I have both omnibuses. Yeah, or maybe maybe three omnibuses for uh, the original Marvel Star Wars run. So yeah, uh, we got issue number 10. I think this is my third copy of this, third or fourth, issue number 10. Uh, issue number nine. Another copy of issue number eight, first Jackson. Issue number seven, first, uh, first expanded issue, i.e., first original story in the run outside of the adaptation of A New Hope. Issue number six, which is the final issue in the New Hope adaptation. Issue number five. Yeah, I agree. Night seven is nice. Uh, I have, I think I have seven in a nine six also slab, right? Nope. That, 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 right there. One of those. I don't know. One of those. Uh, number three. Pretty nice copy here of number three. And number two, first Han Solo, first Obi Wan in the story. Uh, this is, I think, my second or third, uh, second no, third copy of this. Um, the best copy I have is a graded nine four or nine two, signed by Howard Chaykin. Um, so yeah, uh, that was the. Uh, Original Star Wars uh, back issue pickups that I've found as of late. Uh, so yeah, I wanted to show all those as well. Um, let's see. Uh, we are at what's what category we are. We just did comics. Now let's get into um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I forget which exact. Did I give you the first five, Bake? I forget exactly, but um, <laughs> no worries. Um, all right, from comics, we're gonna go. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go to the big category here: original comic art. Usually, I wrap things up on this show with toys and figures, but I don't have really much to speak of with toys and figure pickups this round. But I probably will the next whatever the whenever I end up doing the next episode. But we're gonna go with the original comic art, and we'll wrap up with original comic art. Um, so before I get into the published pages. Uh, Star Wars related. Um, I'm gonna. I wanted to show two things uh, that uh, I, you know, that I've all, you know already shown, but I, not on the Star Wars show yet. Uh, one was this Grogu sketch from Jay Hood, uh, who has been all over this episode. Uh, but uh, when I bought that Star Wars lot from him, um, because I spent more than fifty dollars with him, uh, it came with a free Jay Hood sketch. So he asked me what I wanted. I, I told him, you know, to do a Grogu for me. Uh, and this was his uh, pencil sketch for Grogu, which I think is pretty, pretty damn sweet. Uh, and then I did a whole separate other video about this one. Uh, but um, uh, this one uh, was a A-OK -okay from Enruli Simeon uh, via uh, Gabby California Blend. So it was a blank sketch cover uh, version of Darth Maul. So really, really awesome uh, original art here from two different members of the community. You got J Hood over here, and then you got California Blend over here. So I wanted to plug those again here on the Star Wars specific show, even though I've shown them already on previous episodes. Uh, you know, I always got to shout out some of the community artists. Uh, J Hood is definitely the man. 
uh, Mr. Carroll, uh, stick around for the original art, brother. I think the original art will more than make up for uh, the lack of toys or figures on this episode. If you want toys or figures, though, there's three other episodes worth, and I'm sure there will be more toys and figures next time. Um, but yeah, really, really cool art from these community members. Uh, but uh, absolutely, absolutely great sketches. Uh, but we're going to get into the original comic art now. Uh, these are published uh, pieces uh, from books uh, that uh, I alluded to earlier. First up, I alluded to having something from this issue. So this is Star Wars Lando Double or Nothing number one. And uh, the artist, the artist uh, who did that issue is uh, Paolo Vianelli is his name. Uh, and I forget which pages these were. Uh, pages 14 and 15. So this is a double page spread from that issue, uh, Lando. And it's of the Millennium Falcon in kind of like a chase scene. So it's like space action with TIE fighters and the Millennium Falcon. This is Lando's Falcon, not Han's Falcon. Uh, but it's a double page spread of that sort of action scene in space. I don't know, it's kind of, there's probably a little bit of a glare, but um, I'll do my best to angle it so you guys can see it. So, art once again, the artist on the pencils and inks is named Paolo Vianelli, but you got a Millennium Falcon, you got TIE Fighters, you got a space battle, space scene right here. So there's the first uh, new, or relatively new, published page um, for Star Wars right here that I picked up. Thank you guys. Uh, I even I also pulled the uh, the colored uh, p uh, page from the comic book so you guys can see it. So that's what the colored uh, final published uh, page looks like. So um, there you go. That's that's kind of the comparison. But yeah, there's the original artwork right there. So happy to have that in the art collection. Maybe this shows up on Original Art Hour at some point as well, but this is the Star Wars show, so this is where I'm debuting my Star Wars art pickups moving forward. Uh, but yeah, happy to have that page. Put that aside. Uh, the next uh, set of pages comes from this uh, Star Wars Age of Republic Qui-Gon Jinn one-shot. Um, the artist is Corey Smith. He works only in pencils, so he doesn't have an inker on top of him, and there are no inks. There's no like separate blue line inked version. It's just pencils, and then the they you know the colorist uses the pencils uh, to uh, to color or whatever, uh, or or maybe there's a digital inker somewhere in the process. Uh, not 100% sure, but this is the these are the only uh, original uh, art pieces. Uh, on the issues that he does, and they're just all pencils. Now, the, this isn't a double page spread, but it's two sequential pages. So two pages, meaning meaning uh, it's page 14 and it's page 15 from that book. Uh, and during this part of the book, like Qui-Gon is like going through a force vision, basically. Uh, like he's like deeply sort of ingrained in the force and there's like a little bit of a dark side element to what's going on as well. Um, you know, with the force vision, but I'm just going to show you these two pages one at a time and then side by side. Here's page 14. And again, these are all pencils. Now, on the back of this one was like this kind of prelim drawing over here as well, but here's page 14. You got a big Qui-Gon there. You got a meditating Qui-Gon. Right? So I don't know how, if it's easy or, or not to see these pencils, but I'm doing my best. So that's page 14. And then this is page 15. See that? It's got the lightsaber right there. So yeah, so this is what the pages look like side by side, or, or technically should be like this, I think. 
I don't know if you guys can see that. It's kind of hard. Let me move this mic out of the way a little bit. Yeah. But, and I pulled the actual pictures of these um, published pages as well so you guys can get a look. But yeah, really, really, really happy with, with those two pages, honestly. Um, love the way the, the, the pencils look. Um, <laughs> I, care, I can't take this. Um, yeah, this is, this is 11 by 17. This is standard comic art board size. Not, it's not the size of the comic. It's the standard size for comic art board, 11 by 17. So yeah, uh, let me show you guys the uh, the published pages. There you go. I'll pull this banner so you can see it a little bit better. So that's what the published pages look like. And you just saw the pencils, so. Um, Definitely pretty happy with that uh, pickup right here. So again, Corey Smith, page 14, page 15 from the Qui-Gon Jinn Age of Republic one-shot. Uh, and then the final original art pickup for this haul. Uh, uh, so that artist physically drew on the page you're holding. Yeah, <laughs> that's what original art is, man. Uh, I don't know if you've seen my original art hour show. I think you have. Uh, that's that's what I. That's probably the main thing that I collect at this point. It's original comic art. But anyway, uh, I alluded to it to it earlier. This uh, Star Wars issue number eight. This is in the the current Charles Soule run. Uh, this 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 character right here is an Empire character, General Zara. So you you see you got um, Emperor Palpatine. You got Vader. You got stormtroopers. You got X wings. You got a Death Star blowing up. Uh, a lot of stuff going on on this cover. Um, thanks, Jimmy. Appreciate it. Uh, but I was able to acquire this cover, but it took me a long time because you, this is a, it was a, it's a modern book. The pencils were done by Carlo Pagulian. The inks were done by, um, uh, by, uh, Jason Paz. So the, the pencils needed to be sourced from one place and the inks needed to be sourced from another place. And I had to work on different deals for them, but kind of coordinate through different, you know, through one guy, but he was coordinating with different people on his end. And then there was a holdup for, I think almost six weeks where Lucasfilm, like they were waiting on Lucasfilms, like, you know, cause apparently I think they get like the first shot at it or first crack at it for any of this stuff. Uh, but luckily that didn't work out or, or maybe they never got back to them. I don't know all the details. But I was able to acquire this, so I was pretty happy about it. Here are the pencils by Carlo Pagulian. Again, this is the published cover right here. But awesome pencils right here from Carlo. Uh, cover to Star Wars number eight. And then here are the inks from Jason Paz. So side by side inks and pencils so you know, can see that I also prepared a slide uh, with the scans and the colored cover um, to share on the screen for you guys uh, so you can see it clearer share that there you go so there's the scans scanned versions right there the pencils inks and the published cover so uh thanks guys yeah i mean it took a long time for me to close this deal and figure this out and get this uh but uh finally it happened so <laughs> i mean this is awesome it's scary yeah um, so very, very happy to have that finally in the collection. Uh, and I, even, I also pulled this kind of close up just so you can see how like cool that final published image is. I love it. Um, but yeah, man, that's the, uh, that was the headliner, uh, <laughs> pencils and inks right here, side by side, Jason Paz, Carlo Pagulian. So yeah, man. So that is the um, that is the original art section.
Uh, and that's going to pretty much do it on this episode of the Star Wars Mega Hall Show. Uh, I'm sorry that we had technical difficulties throughout this one. Uh, for anybody watching on the Rewind, I hope you know you skip the first three or four minutes. I'm going to have to figure out exactly what happened <laughs> um, and fix it. But um, that's pretty much it, guys. So uh, stay tuned uh, for the next episode of the Star Wars Mega Hall Show, episode five. Uh, probably won't be for a few weeks, uh, you know, because uh, I'm out of stuff to show as far as Star Wars, but uh, I'm sure more Star Wars stuff will trickle along into the collection um, over over time. So we, there'll be um, another episode in the future. So uh, thank you guys for joining me live here and hanging out and checking out uh, my latest nerdy Star Wars goodness. Uh, and uh, I'll catch you on the next video. Later, everybody. Peace. Where do I begin? I see the hate, they don't want to see me win. Think the pot is like I'm all coming in. Top down, throw the money in the win. I don't want it all. Oh. Heard these scammer had to switch up the accounts. Moving paper, got to call in my account. It's all in, I can have it coming now. Yeah, it's not a purse, it's a merch. Six figures, what's a gold? Now it's nine or a hearse. Put it work. Used to pull up, now I swerve. No time for the snakes, time to put them in the dirt. That's work. I gotta get it, it's in my DNA. You only see the highlights, don't know what it takes. Last year, stressing, got no sleep. Now I'm right between the courts, out of no bleed. I see the hate, they don't wanna see me win. Think the pot is like I'm all coming in. Top down, throw the money in the wind. Scammer had to switch up the accounts. Moving paper got.